Uh, very good evening students uh, very warm welcome to the today's class um, I hope you cleared today's our MCQs in the morning I shared them in quite early actually and you enjoyed them also at 7-11 and uh, yeah that was related to animal cell culture so before that we have shared a little bit about basics of molecular biology MCQs and uh, yeah, and also share three bigs with you, uh, Harper's, Lippincott, and Lehinger. It's, it's related to your biochemistry. And this was, yeah, with microscope, yeah. A microscope was done and animal cell culture was done. So soon I will also share, but tomorrow others uh, MCQs also. Yeah, all is good. So it's already uh, 7 or 10. So we should start. Um, ASAP uh, you're around mostly your 55 56 students who wants to study and the rest of the students I think just came for the uh, Yeah certificate <laughs> It's it's not good that if you're not attending the class you're getting the certificates um, We will we will see that you're all attending it and the persons who are working and, and getting the knowledge only those uh, could go ahead for the certificates okay so let's start uh, with the next part so we were done with the dna microarrays last time so um, before we start anyone has any questions uh, before we uh, give it give a start to it or shall we just start give me a good go and then i will start Okay, uh, let's continue. So, so cloning, now we are going to deal a little bit about cloning part here. Uh, investigating genes with biotechnological approaches. So in this, we apply therapeutic cloning. First, we select the identical copies of DNF in trust that is the gain of functions that we want to look for then we express that in another organism or the transgenic organisms 
In order to do so, what we do, we obtain a large amount of protein such as insulin from bacteria or yeast uh, from a human gene and then we investigate the function of protein in a cell culture models uh, in the animal models also to test the effects of uh, various uh, gene mutations or drug treatments and also we can generate functional DNA molecules for gene therapy in gene related diseases. So these are the therapeutic uh, uses of uh, cloning. Beyond that, we can also go for GMOs, uh, that is a genetically modified organisms, which has either gene deleted or added. Uh, if it is deleted, it is called as knocked out. If it is added, then it's a transgenic. Or if it, there's a change in the gene, uh, that's known as mutant transgenes. And these are done to have healthy protein in our agriculture uh, crops or to generate transgenic animals having you know big cows who keep giving milk uh, during the whole year uh, for the for the production of better potential um, yeah, products Oops. so for D DNA cloning uh, could be done with the plasmid vectors so recombinant DNA technology enables to produce large numbers of identical DNA molecules. Uh, clones are typically generated by placing a DNA fragments of interest into a vector DNA molecule. And then when a single vector contains a single DNA fragments is introduced into host cell, so large number of fragments are reproduced along with the vector. So two common vectors that are being used here are key E. coli plasmid vectors and bacteriophage uh, lambda vectors so here you can see a plasmid cloning vector you might be aware this is the general method is the origin of replications uh, this ampicillin uh, resistance part and then there's a polylinker with a multiple cloning site so these three parts are quite important for a for a plasmid vector so it might have in trees sph1 pctl sal1 xbi like this so in the general procedure uh, what we do you have a plasmid vector then you add your DNA fragment that you want to be cloned. Then they are both uh, being enzymatically inserted into the plasmid vector into this. Then you have a recombinant plasmid. Then you mix your E. coli cells with plasmid in presence of calcium chloride and culture on nutrient agar plates on containing ampicillin. So you have bacterial chromosome, uh, transformed E. coli cell uh, being survived here. And then cells that do not take up plasmid uh, die on ampicillin plates. Then you have independent plasmid replication. So your plasmid will replicate inside them. Then you will have multiple uh, plasmids of your bacterial cells having these plasmids containing the copies of the same recombinant plasmid. If it is uh, insulin dependent or it's an other gene that you're looking for, so you can have a huge amount of same uh, DNA uh, within few minutes. And then there's a plasmid a cloning permits also isolations of DNA fragments from complex mixtures. So you have a, a DNA fragments that you want to be cloned having different like four, four different uh, patterns and you have four different plasmid vectors. So you have four different uh, your transform E. coli cells and then uh, ampicillin resistance colonies. So in this way uh, you can have a mixture of complex mixture within one cell culture. This is also possible actually. Not only one but many. So restriction enzymes, what, what does it do? It cuts DNA molecules uh, at specific sequence. So restriction enzymes are site-specific DNases generating double-stranded breaks. So until now, uh, 600 naturally occurring restriction enzymes have been identified, uh, having four to six base pairs of sequence patterns, and they cut frequently uh, to do the work. So you have a restriction enzyme E. coli, so it will do a blunt cut from G from, from here only, then A, A, T, D, C, C like this. So restriction enzyme segregation sites are usually palindromic. So palindromic means if you uh, see it from the left or from the right, they will spell the right name or same name. So Anna, Otto, Radar, Kayak, so like this. G, A, T, T, C, uh, C, T, T, A, A, G. So they will, um, will produce these palindromic sequences. So both will spell right from both sides. So in some selected restriction enzymes, some examples of them quite important. So BAM H1, um, Bacillus, amp, um, amylolecofaciens, 
then this is streptococcus aureus each azure coli um hemophilus influenza serratio americansis and arcodia autodidactis coverum so they are cutting uh, these recognition sites are being cut here like this and ants produce so they are producing sticky ants here sticky ants sticky ants but here only uh, with the same uh, sma uh, l you can see a blunt end here in in the middle so section fragments uh, with complementary sticky ants uh, they are uh, ligated easily so you can see uh, dna1 and and dna2 yeah um so like this you have it uh, two different dna so we ligate them with the help of n base pairs which one has to go it will attach with that part and it will produce a recombinant dna at the end with the help of enzyme dna ligase or some small story factors because they carry an origin of replication and are therefore able to replicate independently within a cell most plasmids used as vectors also encode some type of selectable marker such as the gene for resistance to ampicillin if the host cells are ampicillin sensitive the only host cells that can grow on a medium containing ampicillin are those that have taken up the plasmid vectors must also have a small sequence of base pairs that can be recognized by a restriction enzyme When this enzyme opens the circular plasmid, foreign DNA can be incorporated. When the plasmid vector and foreign DNA are both cut with the same restriction enzyme and mixed together, not all molecules will join to form recombinants. Some vector molecules will reanneal without incorporating foreign DNA. To identify cells that contain plasmids that have incorporated foreign DNA, a second marker gene is needed on the vector. This second marker contains the restriction enzyme site within its nucleotide sequence. If foreign DNA is inserted, the second marker is inactivated. This is referred to as insertional inactivation. A common second marker is the LAC-C gene, which codes for the enzyme beta-galactosidase. Beta-galactosidase can cleave a colorless chemical called X-gal to form a blue compound. Therefore, colonies of cells that harbor the intact vector but no new recombinant DNA can make beta-galactosidase and form a blue color in the presence of X-gal. However, colonies that contain new recombinant DNA cannot make beta-galactosidase and are white. so that's how um um so we can we can if you are interested we can go for one um um one 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 exam uh, as a big mcq uh, on online exam paper i have to discuss with my uh, authors uh, with my colleagues how we can proceed but we are thinking actually yeah microarrays can compare many gene expression at same time uh, of healthy and non healthy species but the lack y lack a in the lack of prone so this is a totally different concept yeah i know you you bringing it to this part uh but we can we can talk about this later um which is a whole new topic uh, in which it it's it's still with so far i remember with the galactose and a uh, repressor and uh, yeah it, it's so many things are going on at the moment so let me just uh, show you with the lack of prone uh i think i taught in here over here so lag z y a and and they are all actually helping to work out your things 
so at the end uh, it's it's uh, that's the summary here you have when glucose is present and lactose is not present cap binds are not present and repressor wine is not present then no transcription so that's the main summary of your uh, lac upron uh, responses and these are the various uh, uh, like transcription factors that helps to follow the reactions yeah so where was it yeah that's it i guess Now here it is written, lac Z and cause enzyme that split lactose into monosaccharides. Uh, lac Y encodes a membrane embedded transporter that helps lactose into the cell actually. So that, that's the where is your answer lies actually. Lac Z, lac Y. Yeah. So no worries no worries uh, we always have new things in our life uh, we have to learn and, and get oh my battery is only 9% give me a second students get me the charger otherwise it will discharge away it's good I found it out continue at the moment students I just want to share it's being a teacher is not it's not ABCD uh, it's we are we are sending internals of our students uh, we are having, you know, at the moment internal practicals. Uh, we're gonna also have external practicals, and we have, uh, like, you know, it, <laughs> a big uh, tumble of sheets to be checked. Uh, we have to write those names also. We have to send internals and externals, um, and and yeah, we are also going with the classes here. Um, so just want to share <laughs> that being a teacher is as. Uh, it's a lot of lot of tasks at once so it's like we should have like gods and goddesses having multiple hands multiple faces so at the moment I need that somebody could help me to do so to do multiple tasks at one time <laughs> so sorry something apart from uh, our course uh, a little bit fun uh, let's <laughs> come to the serious point <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, we did this part. Uh, then now there is a polylinkers. So this is what we are talking here is a little bit about advanced cloning here. So we have polylinkers actually. So we can cut uh, a DNA strand with multiple restriction enzymes like E. coli, KPNL1, SMA, BAMH1, XPA, and then we insert E. coli restriction fragments to that um, with the help of polylinker. And this is your plasmid vector and then you have other genomic DNA and then you insert them uh, into this part with the help of DNA ligase and then you also have a, a, another recombinant plasmid 
Now this is uh, cloning the transcriptome. Um, so here you can see a complementary DNA. Uh, the cDNA libraries are prepared from the isolated mRNAs. So you can see some isolated RNAs, tRNAs, they're all being present and also mRNAs. And you have oligo DT matrix here on the right. So you mix under hybridization conditions um, and then only the, uh, the, 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 the mRNA uh, which can attach to this AA part with the TTT. They will be attached and then rest of the uh, ribosomal RNA and tRNA will be washed away. And at the end, we can elute them with the low salt buffer and you have purified mRNA preparation at the end. Uh, and then this is how you can purify your mRNA from your tRNA and, and M, uh, rRNA, ribosomal RNA. Further preparation of bacteriophage lambda with complementary uh, cDNA library. Here you can see uh, oli A tail mRNA which hybridized with the oligo DT primer. And then you transcribe RNA into complementary DNA. Then you remove this RNA with alkali at a poly G tail. So here, then hybridize with the oligo DC primer and then you have synthesized uh, complementary strand out of it. Then you protect this complementary DNA with methylation. Then you ligate with the cDNA linkers and then you, you put them into the E. coli and then individual lambda cDNA clones are being produced. Then uh, identifying, analyzing, sequencing clone here, you can see that the most common approach to identify a specific clones involves screening a library by hybridization with radioactively labeled DNA or RNA probes. So labeled nucleotide probes also used to identify a specific nucleotide here, uh, like we have discussed like southern and northern protein. And then the direct sequencing is also often applied uh, to check your libraries of DNA or cDNA. So now comes your DNA sequencing, that is your Sanger uh, deoxy method. So here you can see that um, you have your uh, DNTPs, so DNA polymerase with DATPs, GTPs, GCTPs, all those, these nucleotides, um, uh, with also uh, DDGTP in low concentration. So the basic principle could be explained here. So what is happening is you have a uh, one template, then you add with the DNTPs like we discussed, 100 micromolar and DNA polymerase, and they will tag. Uh, they will tag with the with the with the all other uh, DDATPs, DDGTPs, and your sequences will go until um, your this GTP is there. They will only sequence to that part, then it will stop. So you have denature separate. Uh, by the uh, by the electrophoresis at the end. So we will have all the with the G and C and A and T be separated and then we can check them with the help of software uh, which bands belongs to uh, which sequence and we can code our sequence of, of any genomic DNA like this. So let's check this out.
so so that was about a sanger uh, sequencing okay Google Meet supports 250 people. Really, Viplap. Rajneesh Kumar. Haan, bache, Hindi mein bhi hum baat kar sakte hai. Mujhe koi problem nahi hai. Hindi mein toh mujhe baat karna bohat achcha lagta hai. Um, hum yaha pe Hindi mein hi bhaate hai sabko college mein. But, wo kya hai ki uh, most of the population kahi Hindi samajhte nahi hai mere khyal se. Uh, uh, could you raise some students who cannot understand Hindi? Uh, because abhi tak main sirf english hi padha raha didn't ask the, uh, the the language is everyone okay with hindi and english together is hindi fine because in my earlier classes when i was teaching most of the students were not able to understand hindi they were from yeah, south india or west bengal so hindi was a bit difficult task so that's why i have to keep uh, in, in english then that will be good for all Okay. Lack operon PDF. Uh, which I can share, but uh, you can ask me personally, uh, Dia Kole. I can share with you uh, this lack operon PDF. No worries. So mixed language is fine. Okay, okay. Theek hai, no worries. Hindi me bhi karenge. But ये होता है बच्चे when I start in Hindi फिर मेरा पूरा Hindi हो जाएगा <laughs> मेरा मेरा पूरा Hindi चलेगा फिर और ठीक <laughs> है ठीक है Momita cannot understand sir please in English so yeah that's the thing uh, so the when I was in Germany during that time, so all the Germans, when they were doing conversation, they used to change for me into English, actually. Um, so I, I, I want to keep that thing. If some students are not able to understand Hindi, um, so we have to maintain some decor of the, of the classroom so that things could be done um, in, in, a, in a good way. Yeah, it might be wrong then. The video people might have done it wrong. But a sequencer is, is a machine actually. There is many machines we will discuss uh, which sequence your genomic DNA. You give them your, uh, your, your blood sample or tissue sample and then it will sequence your whole uh, DNA, your whole genomic DNA within few days. But the practicals that we are doing, it's, it's itself is practical. So what I'm doing, some which or three, um, if you've been on the, from the first classes, so if I'm uh, teaching one technique, so I'm playing one video, trying to have one virtual video, virtual lab for the same, so that you can have the both experience. We did this RT-PCR with DNA microarray and every, every each thing, uh, yeah, yeah, we keep on English, we keep on English, no worries. Um, um, so keep keep um, making making things together so that you can also have the practical knowledge and also the PPD's knowledge, you know, the, the theoretical knowledge. Okay, so let's continue as the time is very constrained here to us. So yeah, we are not talking about next generation sequencing. So there are technologies, um, uh, platforms, so there are various platforms available in the market. Uh, that is Roche, Illumina, Applied Biosystem, Helicos, Heliscope, uh, Pacific Biosciences, Life Technologies. Yeah. So in the Roche, uh, you have, uh, it, it, was, it was produced in 2004. 
then Illumina in 2006, then Applied by System in Solid System in 2007, then Helicos Heliscope in 2010, then Pacific Biosciences in 2010 also, and then Life Technologies with Iron Torrid in 2011. So there are various parameters that we check uh, for each sequences which is good or bad from the post point of view, read length, speed, accuracy, preparation time, manipulation steps. So number of uh, billion base pairs, so it was from the year of 2004, it just took a sudden, a sudden up uh, from there. Earlier it was quite low uh, number of base pairs of billions uh, we could check. So it, it goes from 50, 60 billion base pairs by 2008, it was uh, 100 base pairs. So that's how we can check um, uh, within within few days. And this is uh, the various machines, uh, Roche, uh, Lumina, Solexa, Solid3, Plurinator, Helicos, Pacific Biosense. So these are the various platforms having uh, various different principles could read uh, with, their, with also their pros and cons, how they are working. And this is a summary of that with the next generation sequencing. That is your Roche, basically three in the main market at the moment, Roche, Illumina and Solid. So Roche is based, uh, the chemistry is based on the pyrus sequencing, Illumina on the polymerase based, and Solid is the ligation based. And the amplification um, is, is done with the help of emulsion PCR, in Illumina bridge AMP and Solid emulsion PCR. So you have paired ends, yes, 3 kb uh, uh, kb base pair, then 200 base pairs, and 3 kb base pairs in the solid. And then 100 MB, uh, 1300, 3000 uh, mega base pair. So it has the highest base pair it could uh, read actually, the solid. Uh, the time it takes, uh, it's seven hours. It take, Illumina takes the highest time, uh, but with the solid takes uh, five days only. But it, uh, it's also calculate quite high number of base pairs uh, per run. And the cost, most highly cost effective, it seems to be, um, yeah, the solid uh, with 3,000 3, base pairs. Uh, within five days, um, you're going to have $5.81 uh, uh, per base pair. You can, you can calculate it. So total cost uh, somehow, but this is cheaper. Uh, this is 8,000, like 9,000 something. This is uh, almost 17,500. And this is $8,500. But this takes also quite less time um, and read length is around 250 base pairs, here is 40 and it's 35. So that's the basic difference. So let's, um, instead of going um, these, so this is Roche actually in the Roche, uh, you have a library constructions with the A and B base pairs like this and they get attached and then we add to this is emulsion PCR and, and to this emulsion PCRs our, our DNA sequences are being attached. And then there's a, a pyro sequencing reaction is happening, which keep giving the luciferase uh, reactions. And with the each luciferase reaction, there's a light and oxylucin is working out. And with the Illumina sequencing, is the adapter uh, game is playing, play, play, being playing role in, in this case. So first we prepare a genomic DNA samples, and then attach DNA to surface. And then you have bridge amplifications and denature the double stranded molecules. Then first chemistry cycle determine the first base and then the image uh, will come into the next chemistry cycles like this. So let's see this one about the, the various sequences. Next Generation Sequencing, or NGS, is a powerful platform that has enabled the sequencing of thousands to millions of DNA molecules simultaneously. This powerful tool is revolutionizing fields such as personalized medicine, genetic diseases, and clinical diagnostics by offering a high throughput option with the capability to sequence multiple individuals at the same time. Sanger sequencing, first developed in the 1900s, is a gold standard for DNA sequencing and it is still used today extensively for routine sequencing applications and to validate NGS data. It utilizes a high fidelity DNA dependent polymerase to generate a complementary copy to a single stranded DNA template. In each reaction, a single primer, complementary to the template, initiates a DNA synthesis reaction from its 3' end. Deoxynucleotides, or simply nucleotides, are added one after the other in a template-dependent manner. Each reaction also contains a mixture of four dideoxynucleotides, one for each DNA base. 
These dideoxynucleotides resemble the DNA monomers enough to allow incorporation into the growing strand. However, they differ from natural deoxynucleotides in two ways. One, they lack a 3' hydroxyl group which is required for further DNA extension, resulting in chain termination once incorporated in the DNA molecule. And two, each dideoxynucleotide has a unique fluorescent dye attached to it, allowing for automatic detection of the DNA sequence. As a result, many copies of different length DNA fragments are generated in each reaction, terminated at all of the nucleotide positions of the template molecule by one of the dideoxynucleotides. The reaction mixtures are loaded on the sequencing machine, either manually onto slab gels or automatically with capillaries, and are electrophoresed to separate the DNA molecules by size. The DNA sequence is read through the fluorescent emission of the dideoxynucleotide as it flows through the gel. Modern-day Sanger sequencing instruments use capillary-based automated electrophoresis, which typically analyzes 8 to 96 sequencing reactions simultaneously. Next-generation sequencing systems have been introduced in the past decade that allow for massively parallel sequencing reactions. These systems are capable of analyzing millions or even billions of sequencing reactions at the same time. Although different machines have been developed with various differing technical details, they all share some common features. 1. Simple preparation. All next-generation sequencing platforms require a library obtained either by amplification or ligation with custom adapter sequences. 2. Sequencing machines. Each library fragment is amplified on a solid surface with covalently attached DNA linkers that hybridize the library adapters. This amplification creates clusters of DNA, each originating from a single library fragment. Each cluster will act as an individual sequencing reaction. And 3. Data output. Each machine provides the raw data at the end of the sequencing run. This raw data is a collection of DNA sequences that were generated at each cluster. The differences between the different next-generation sequencing platforms lie mainly in the technical details of the sequencing reaction, and can be categorized in four groups. Pyrosequencing, sequencing by synthesis, sequencing by ligation, and ion semiconductor sequencing. In pyrosequencing, the sequencing reaction is monitored through the release of a pyrophosphate during each nucleotide incorporation. The released pyrophosphate is used in a series of chemical reactions resulting in the generation of light. Light emission is detected by a camera which records the appropriate sequences of the cluster. The sequencing proceeds by incubating one base at a time, measuring the light emission, if any, degrading the unincorporated bases, and then the addition of another base. This technology is capable of generating large read lengths, much comparable to the read length of Sanger sequencing. However, high reagent cost and high error rate over strings of six or more homopolymers have reduced its applications. For more details on the technical aspect of this technology, please visit our knowledge base at the link provided in the description below. Sequencing by synthesis utilizes the step-by-step -step incorporation of reversibly fluorescent and terminated nucleotides for DNA sequencing and is used by the Illumina NGS platforms. All four nucleotides are added to the sequencing chip at the same time, and after nucleotide incorporation, the remaining DNA bases are washed away. The fluorescent signal is read at each cluster and recorded. Both the fluorescent molecule and the terminator group are then cleaved and washed away. This process is repeated until the sequencing reaction is complete. This system is able to overcome the disadvantages of the pyrosequencing system by only incorporating a single nucleotide at a time. However, as the sequencing reaction proceeds, the error rate of the machine also increases. This is due to incomplete removal of the fluorescent signal, which leads to higher background noise levels. Our NGS, an introduction knowledge base, provides more technical details about this technology. Sequencing by ligation is different from the other two methods since it does not utilize a DNA polymerase to incorporate nucleotides. Instead, it relies on 16 octamer oligonucleotide probes, each with one of four fluorescent dyes attached to its 5' end that are ligated to one another. Each octamer consists of two probe-specific bases and six degenerate bases. The sequencing reaction commences by binding of the primer to the adapter sequence and then hybridization of the appropriate probe. This hybridization of the probe is guided by the two probe-specific bases and upon annealing, is ligated to the primer sequence through a DNA ligase. 
unbound oligonucleotides are washed away, then the signal is detected and recorded. After that, the fluorescent signal, along with the last three bases, the octamer probe, are cleaved, and then the next cycle commences. After approximately seven cycles of ligation, the DNA strand is denatured and another sequencing primer, offset by one base from the previous primer, is used to repeat these steps. In total, five sequencing primers are used. The major disadvantage of this technology is the very short sequencing reads generated. Ion semiconductor sequencing utilizes the release of hydrogen ions during the sequencing reaction to detect the sequence of a cluster. Each cluster is located directly above a semiconductor transistor, which is capable of detecting changes in the pH of the solution. During nucleotide incorporation, a single hydrogen ion is released into the solution and it is detected by the semiconductor. The sequencing reaction itself proceeds similarly to pyrosequencing, but at a fraction of the cost. Please view our knowledge base for further details on ion semiconductor sequencing and the sequencing by ligation techniques. In order to be able to showcase and compare the different technical aspects of each of the above technologies, the number of coverage that each run generates when sequencing the whole human, mouse, Arabidopsis thaliana, and E. coli genomes are calculated and presented here. The presented data is based on the most powerful machines of each technology. Further details can be found on our knowledge base. For whole genome sequencing data to be useful, a minimum of 30 times coverage is required. As it can be seen, the pyrosequencing method is only able to sequence the E. coli genome at enough coverage to result in valid data. The sequencing by synthesis method, which is the most popular method currently on the market, is able to generate hundreds of coverage per run. In fact, with this machine, it is possible to sequence 15 individuals within three and a half days. The sequencing by ligation method also generates enough coverage for all genomes to be used. However, it isn't capable of generating nearly as much output as the Illumina HiSeq machines. The iron proton machine is used mostly in clinical settings because it is able to provide a sufficient size output within two hours. ABM offers a wide range of next generation sequencing services. These include whole genome sequencing, exome sequencing, RNA sequencing, disease panels, lane rentals, and much more. To be able to access our services, please visit our website at www.abmgood.com. And from there, click on the NGS sequencing services link. This will load our NGS service webpage, which details all of our available services. Clicking on a service of interest will showcase the technical details, pricing, and bioinformatics solutions that are related to that particular service. Please leave your questions and comments below, and we will answer them as soon as possible. For more information, please visit our knowledge base at the link provided below. Thank you for watching. So that's it, student. I hope um, hey. Okay, but uh, we cannot be, uh, be plugged, we cannot record why why the chat is not going down. We cannot uh, we cannot record uh, the recordings because most probably these students who are not attending they will go tomorrow and will read them. So I'm seeing them the views are getting increased over the night and the next day. So that and it's quite easy uh, to understand. But for some strange reason, I cannot read your chats. I don't know why. And please confirm me if you can you um, able to watch all these videos in the presentations. Otherwise, I have to send them you separately. Uh, why chat is not working?
कैन यू इन द प्रेजेंटेशन दैट आई शेड शेड विद यू लास्ट टाइम इन द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप आई थिंक समवेयर हेयर कुछ यू कुछ यू Was it here? No. Yeah, this one. This is the file. Um, molecular biology methods. Could you check in this in this file that can you watch the videos that I'm sharing with you at the moment? So please confirm me with that. So we have only five minutes left. So shall I continue with the next topic? Hmm. okay i will i will start so there is a, a sequencing um so you can see a genome sequencing the applications of this sequencing that we can re uh, sequence the human exomes uh, small and long rna profiling chip sequencing dna methylation polysomal rna origins of replications whole genome associations uh, 1000 dollar genome project so the current bottleneck uh, data management uh, is possible with this So DNA sequences are uh, caught in and and this was in November thirty two thousand eleven. So method to study gene function. So studying the functions of a gene protein. So you can have a uh, basic principles and nomenclature. So so you have a mutant organism cells comparisons of mutant and wild type functions. So you have genetic analysis. Uh, you can and then you clone the gene, and then your protein could be localized. So this could be done in vivo. In vivo means in living organisms, and ex vivo in an organ, ex plant, in vitro, in reagent tube, or in silico. The computer-based simulations or data analysis. So advantages of working with cultured uh, cells over intact organisms, more homogeneous uh, than cells and tissues. uh we can control experiment conditions uh they can isolate single cells to grow cloning of genetically homogeneous clone cells ethically it's non controversial also so commonly used cell cultures are derived from the bacteria yeast vertebrates plants uh, and then there's a growth of microorganisms in culture so example e coli and yeast uh sarcomasi cervicae uh, they have rapid growth rate on nutritional requirement can grow in semi solid agar and mutant strains can be isolated by uh, replica plating so in the replica plating you have sterile velvet covered stem um, and you have arginine missing clones arginine negative and arginine uh, negative clones are being pres uh, present in the minimal medium this is how you do replica plating and then further you can grow it the animal cells in culture which requires media including essential amino acids vitamins glucose serum i mostly grow on the special solid surfaces like blood cells so single mouse cell looks like this clone of human cells looks like this and many clones in a petri dish goes like that so main advantage uh, is that instead of using the whole organism whole animal as a mouse we can we can extract the cells from that we can put them in the petri dish and check one phys, uh, like physiology that you're looking for one one mechanism that you're looking for within the cell and this is also you don't need very big you know very big achievements for that or very big uh, like authority to do so some ethical uh, assurance you can do just start experiments with the cells and whatever the results that you will see you can demonstrate that these mechanisms are, are happening in the cell level so most likely this might be also happening at the mouse level and then later on at the human level because 90% chromosome of mouse is similar to the human so whatever the mouse thing is happening might be happening in the human also so but to start from your cell level to mouse level to human level all these things matters uh, it needs a lot of time to go for and then something could be possible as a drug uh, as a drug could be find out so this is very famous uh, you might be aware of uh, of the primary cell line culture so to study the the gene function so they are primary cell culture that established from the animal tissues 
and there are some certain types of cells that are easier to culture than the others. So most cells moved from animal contains a fraction of cells that grow and divide from a limited period of time. And certain transformed cells may arise that immortal and can be used to form cell line. The rate of spontaneous uh, transformation varies of different species. So here is the human cell. First they will grow in state. Then there is a stationary phase. Then they will start to decrease. Then there is cell senescence. Whereas the mouse cells, they will have initial growth. Then they will also have senescence. Then the uh, immortal variant cell line will start to grow. So both uh, human cells and mouse cells, they work opposite from each other actually. Uh, but to, to see that the results to be similar, uh, that's quite hard. So this is the fibroblast that has been cultured um, on, the, on the primary immortal differentiated cells. This is NIH 3D3 mouse embryo fibroblast. And this is undifferentiated cells and these are differentiated so they are not being properly taken the form but here they have taken the proper form um, of your fibroblast. So this these, these is how your cells looks like. So this we will start tomorrow with the transgenic mice and a knockout mouse uh, with the loss of functions that is knockout SIRNA, gain of functions with the transgenic mouse and flavors. So we will start these topics tomorrow uh, for today we are done till here. So please confirm with me that can you are able to see the videos? Uh, Shreya uh, Khamar, please write me in the in the um, please write me personally on my uh, on Telegram message. I can share with you just now. So write me here, so I will share with you. I cannot share in the group actually. It's not allowed to share other projects PPTs straightforwardly so I can help someone who is uh, looking for lack of prod so I can share with them might be helpful for your uh, your studies so that's it for today you might be having your next lecture coming up so go through this lecture send your PPTs so I will keep sharing more MCQs later to that Okay then, bye-bye, take care, see you, see you tomorrow, see, all good, bye-bye, take care, all the best for tomorrow, go for the next class.